Good morning, everyone. My name is Reverend Jennifer Kleitz, and I am part of the Unity of Las Cruces ministerial team. We are so very happy to have you with us this morning. Welcome to Unity of Las Cruces, Zoom Sunday service celebration, where God is good all the time and all are welcome, safe, and loved. It is my honor to bring and introduce our spiritual leader, Helen Wright, who will say this morning's spiritual reading. Thank you, and today's inspirational reading is coming from the book by Will Bowen, To You Love God. So it's a whole daily practice of hearing what, what God would like us to hear personally in this moment today. So February 6th, it's all about love. To you, if you have ever observed a mother snuggling her child, if you have ever seen unbounded pride glinting in a father's eye, if you have witnessed lovers who at every glance effuses is adoration, if you have experienced love so profound that your mind is consumed with thoughts of your beloved, if you have ever felt the thrill of a friend who revels in your very presence, then you have just a faint inkling of how I feel about you. You delight me. You make me laugh. You are precious to me. I love you completely and without end. You are my beloved in whom I am well pleased. Love, God. And so it is. So it is. Thank you, Helen. Thank you very much. That is one of my favorite books, and it was gifted to me by Kay Brilliant, and it was is one of the treasures of my library. And today's speaker will be Helen Wright, our spiritual leader at Unity of Las Cruces, and she will also be doing our meditation and our song will be by Barry Shaw and Max Contreras. Now for the good news. All right, thank you, Jennifer. Let me switch myself over here. There we go. Hey, hey everybody, you guys don't normally get to see me, so I'm just gonna show you, hi everybody. And I'm gonna share this screen with you, that way you can see exactly what we're talking about. So this is a great little article that was sent over by Helen. She thought it was really cool and I agree with 100%. This is a recent thing from CNN Travel, uh, dated February 2nd. So that was just a couple days ago. There is an opportunity here for, for adults, uh, in this case, two first time dads at the, of the penguin variety have the opportunity to now to raise a, a penguin chick on their own. And they have done a really great job. The two Adults in this one are Elmer and Lima. And there's a little note on here. Elmer was named because when he was a chick, his parents cracked his egg and they were able to patch the egg with a little Elmer's glue. That's why he got the name Elmer. But he and Lima, uh, his partner, got together and they are fostering a, an egg that was born to another same, another set of uh, penguins. And they are raising this chick and they're doing a great job, according to the folks out there at the zoo. And the zoo is in uh, Syracuse, New York. And they're doing this great thing and they're raising these great penguins and the penguin couple. And they have all sorts of different penguins out there doing the great and wonderful things of raising uh, additional penguins. And they are doing a great job and they're doing um, some work at the zoo raising humble penguins, which are classified as vulnerable. And they're doing a great job doing this. So this is, this is an opportunity to see that anybody and anything can be, can be a parent and raise a child of their own. I thought this was a really cool, inspirational moment. Thank you very much, and back to you. Thank you, Ken. All right, I appreciate that. My notes here. And please send your favorite good news to share next Sunday or a following Sunday. Simply email it to unitylascruces at gmail.com. 
Subject line, good news, attention, Ken Warner. We give thanks. This is our moment of gratitude. We, all of us, Unity of Las Cruces, are so grateful for all who enliven our church, including those behind the scenes, you who attend and watch via YouTube, our prayer chaplaincy, our New Thought prayer team, helpers and donors, anonymous prayers, our musicians, our Unity of Las Cruces board, social and outreach for media, Zoom, YouTube, email, the ministry team, and our speakers. All of these people are so important for our wonderful Sunday celebration, and we are so grateful. Thank you for raising the vibrations of the universe through your prayers, affirmations, and visualizations, and for allowing the love, light, and healing to flow through you to all. Now, Kay Brilliant will do our opening prayer. Good morning and welcome to Unity of Las Cruces, where we know that God is good all, all the, the time. time. Please join me in prayer. Mother, Father, God, we celebrate this wonderful month. It is the month of love, but we know that love is all the time, everywhere present. God is love, and love surrounds me. In that love, I safely dwell. Tis above. Beneath, within me, God is love, and all is well. And we say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. And now... I introduce our speaker for this morning, Helen Wright, our spiritual leader. Thank you. And so I'm, as a speaker, I'm just going to hop back and, and um, ask uh, that Dave Aidy can do our daily word reading. Good morning, Unity friends. Today's daily word is dominion. Our affirmation, claiming dominion. I am calm and confident. I am a powerful spiritual being endowed with dominion. The authority to take command of my thoughts, words, and actions. Even as I work to change my circumstances, I remember I am not constrained by what is happening around me. Claiming dominion, I choose my response in all situations. I live with poise and confidence. I claim dominion over my thoughts and feelings. When I recognize limiting thoughts, I train myself to affirm my spiritual power and freedom. Divine wisdom guides me. I feel the strength of the indwelling Christ presence moment by moment, thought by thought, as I use my dominion to establish a positive, fulfilling direction for my life. And from scripture, Genesis 1, verse 26. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion. And our affirmation, please, together. Claiming dominion, I am calm 
and confident. And so it is. Amen. Thank you, Dave. And now we have our affirmation for unity. And today it's our prosperity affirmation. So I invite everyone to, to, to join me and say this, this affirmation together. Divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give and all that I receive. And I am grateful. And I am grateful to have the opportunity to speak today and introduce our February theme of love. And so I am going to be doing something, stretching my limits and I can still be with you as I find. There we are. So I, I really wanted to, I, I love the sort of idea of the talk title of Love Them All. And you may remember at the, the celebration of life for Terry Lund, that's where I heard Jerry um, talking about Terry and her teaching and her coaching and, and uh, inviting him to, oh, just love them all. And so um, I really wanted to explore today. My question, of course, is how? How do we love them all? How do we love all people, all of humankind? So I, um, I took a look at the, all of the different types of love, and I'm sure that we probably are all familiar with this. Um, and there's, there's philia, which is affectionate love. It's love without romantic action, and it occurs between friends or family members. And when I looked up the, um, the terms of love that are referenced in the Bible, or the concepts of love referenced in the Bible, this would be the brother, brotherly or sisterly uniting love then there's pragma which is enduring love the second one from uh, google plus the bible is storgi that familiar love love in, within the family and that is one of the ones mentioned in the bible then there is eros romantic love the sensual or romantic love we have other defi definitions of love of ludus playful love mania obsessive love I can never say this one very easily. Philosia, yeah? self-love, and then agape, self-love, God's love for humankind. And of course, this agape, this concept of God's love is in the Bible. And it's, it's this love of God for, for, for creation, for us as the created children of God, the beings of God. It's also the love of us for God, uh, as we heard about in that in inspirational reading. And it's the humankind, the love that we can share together from that higher level of consciousness. And we can't go shopping anywhere in any store at the moment without seeing red everywhere, red hearts, red flowers, red boxes of chocolate. It's Valentine's Day and there's hearts and red everywhere. And sometimes in the, I previously I've gone into this Oh, the materialism, this consumerism, why do we have to have all of this stuff going on? But listening to Patricia Cota Robles has helped me listen to see this from, a, again, a higher level of consciousness that so many people around the world are focusing on Valentine's Day and they're focusing on love. And does it really matter which part of this list of all the different qualities of love? Um, yes, it's often seen as romantic love, but the fact that so many people are focusing on love means love is in the air literally love is in our consciousness so charles Fillmore had something which i really enjoy he had something to say about love and charles wrote love will bring your own to you adjust all misunderstandings and make your life and affairs healthy happy and harmonious and free as they should be and I love that. I love that love bringing all of this, this health, happiness, harmony. And is it, it's, it's a, a balancing power within us. And then I also like this uh, from Eileen Caddy, one of the co-founders of um, the Fintorn Foundation. And she's talking about poor 
forth the oil of love on troubled waters. She writes, remember a group cannot function smoothly and harmoniously without love. Love alone can iron out all differences and misunderstandings. Pour forth the oil of love on troubled waters and bring peace and calm and perfect unity and understanding. Be very patient and very loving. There is much to be learned by all of you. And they are not easy lessons to learn. So help one another over the rough and stony places by simply loving one another with my divine love and see how perfectly everything will work out. So again, the harmonizing power of love. So again, going back to the celebration of life and Reverend Terry, I really did appreciate what Jerry was sharing. And I just really did appreciate it. it sort of ignited within me the understanding that that is what I'm called to, to do, to be, to love, love them all, love everyone, just love them all. And it, it sort of spoke to me that that's, that's probably one of the purposes of all of us on the planet right now is, is to love. A couple of weeks ago, um, we had that reading that was in the in your light i learn how to love and it's this learning how to to love deeper love more in that agape love love and yes i agree with eileen caddy that it it takes effort it is a lesson and i then began to think about what sort of um tools do we have in our unity toolkit what can help us love more and love love them all um, and I also reflected that I, I can embrace the concept of loving them all, demonstrating that, expressing that, but I feel it's okay for me right now not to like all of their behaviors. Um, so trying to separate, separate out loving the being that it has the divinity within and separating that out from my judgment about behaviors or not necessarily liking uh, what people do and say. Now, I know that most of you know that I love, 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 love cats, felines in every shape and form. If I look at a great gathering of cats, um, I do love them all. They can be short haired or long haired or tabby or calico. They can be Scottish fold with the crumpled ears. They can be gray or orange, ginger, white, black, tailless, like the Manx cat or having tails. You know, I, I love them all. Do I like every behavior that I have experienced from cats? Not necessarily. So like when Cheetah Benita, uh, he was a feisty little cat. And at one point, he actually, I don't know what he was doing, but he was falling. And so he, he grabbed onto me and like the Tom and Jerry movies, I don't know how he got a hold of my belly, but there was just those claw marks, vertical claw marks as he, he must have jumped and then slid down my body, creating these deep grooves. And no, I wasn't too thrilled about that behavior. He had another time when he actually got a claw, I picked him up and he actually got a claw right hooked up inside the soft tissue under my eye. And I had to take him in and with a mirror, try and just extricate him and his claw uh, from my face. So, but, but all of that, I was in unconditional love. I didn't dislike him. I didn't hate him in that moment. I didn't even get angry or, or frustrated. So, so, you know, my cats have really been important teachers and they have taught me about unconditional love. So, you know, no revenge, no frustration, uh, no anger, but just that unconditional love. So my cats have given me that opportunity to learn and grow and demonstrate this love. And they're, they're like having a wise spiritual teacher with me in my home and in my heart. So then I asked the question, what about people? What about humans? Is it easy to love them all? And I think about the last couple of years and the divides, the political divides. I, I look at the whole, whole different opinions about masks, vaccinations, and all of that. And there's a lot of different opinions. So I contemplated how, how we can 
how we can learn better how to love everyone. How can we learn to express that divine love? And what do our unity principles teach us about loving everyone? So the shortened version of the unity principles are, number one, God is. Number two, I am. Number three, I think. Number four, I pray. Number five, I live it. So unity principles, number one, God is. Number two, I am. We are one. We believe in this oneness and we believe that we're created in, in the image of God. We believe we have this divinity within each one of us. Um, no, unity principle number three means, says, I think. So I can rationalize this belief to, I can go to a place where I should love them all. And there we are, there I am in judgment and shudding on people and myself. I should love them all because these are our principles. And, and I know that principles number one and number two affirm the truth of our being. And they affirm that divinity in each of us, that Christ consciousness. And one time I heard a story and I no longer know whether these were Christian monks or Buddhists or Zen, I don't know. But the story is basically, there was 12, I'll call them monks. And each one of them been, had been told that one of them uh, was the Christ consciousness, was the Christ in expression. And so what happened was no one knew who that would be. And so everyone went about their work going, well, maybe I'm the Christ. Um, maybe this other person I don't particularly get along with, maybe that's the Christ. Christ. And so they went on being the best possible person that they could be in expression through a belief in that divinity and and both the everyone was lifted up by treating others the very very best that they could be because in their midst was the bodhisattva was buddha was the christ uh, the second coming of christ so this concept of you know being the best we can be because they were they were told one of you is is it, is, is the Christ. And we know that that Christ consciousness is in all of us, all of the time. So this is one of the things I, I believe can help me come to love, love them all. Unity principle number four, I pray and I meditate. And what came to mind was a Tonglen type of meditation where where we'll actually experience a modified version of that in our meditation today, where in med meditation, I can bring people into my awareness, first people I lo love easily, uh, bring myself into that. And then people who are neutral, I can bring them in. And then I can go to people that I have more of a challenge in, in loving everyone with that unconditional love. During this last week, one of our daily word was expect the good. And we talked about expecting the best in everyone, expecting the best in myself, but expecting the best in others. So when there are people in my life, uh, which so frequently are, that I have to work harder to be in that place of being loving, then I can really come in, step into that place of expecting me to be my best, but I can expect the other people are being the best that they possibly can. And the divinity is there. Um, and then, of course, I have to say, of course, there is actually no other when we believe in oneness and we realize oneness, there is no other. Um, the next thing I considered was visualizing. So we know about the power of visualization, imagination. And then I go to imagining white light or rose light enfolding the person that I have more difficulty loving in that moment. It may be a situation. And so I can just imagine white light around them, rose light around them, and again, just affirm their divinity within. And just doing that, um, when people do a practice of just doing that on a regular basis, the whole relationship can change. And often over a very, very short period of time. Um, Charles Fillmore certainly was very interested in dreams and what our dreams are informing us. So I've, I've had two, I've had many significant dreams that completely change 
my perspective that can completely change how I view or how I feel people or a situation. And I say I've been blessed because I've had two dreams. Uh, and we can have dreams when we request dreams for insight. And these dreams were spontaneous dreams. They might come in a, a, an, any other altered state of consciousness like meditation. But they can often bring new revealing information. And in this case, they completely shifted my consciousness. And I've, I've had really profound dreams about two of our American presidents um, over the last 20, 30 years that I've been here in this country. And both of those particular individuals, I, I found it very, very hard to even be patient with, never mind be in a state of respect or love. And in both situations, I had profound dreams that revealed more about that person and their purpose and, and their behaviors. And it completely shifted me into a different state of being more loving. And so I know in the political arena, that is really not an easy thing often. Whatever party we are belong to or believe in, there are always then those of another party, political party, that we may need to work harder on to, to love. And yet that is our mission. Our mission is to be love, is to be that divine love in expression. Another tool um, I have found useful in, in dealing with pe people that are very, very different from me or uh, I'm finding it very difficult to be in that loving space. And I would say that you know, walking a mile in their shoes, the concept of empathy. <coughs> empathy <coughs> the concept of, of self-love and love the other through compassion and understanding and finding that common ground. Um, so I, I learned a lot of good skills through the Citizens Climate Lobby, um, how to talk to people with totally op opposite opinions um, and really try and come to find that common ground, find that point of connection that we can still connect with that other human being. And so cultivating empathy and cultivated compassion is a tool that can help us build our ability to love. And then heart math. Heart math encourages us to go to our heart space and to incorporate uh, breathing. But it's really um, bringing into our heart uh, the sense of love, you know, feeling love in our heart space and love that is more of that divine love, that agape quality. And so I just invite you now just to take a moment just to experience this in this moment. To just maybe put your hand on your heart space, focus on your breathing and bring to mind a feeling of a beloved. It could be an animal, it could be a partner, it could be God, it could be nature, it could, just just that feeling of, of where you know that you're feeling, sensing, being, expressing love and just let that rest in your heart. And now just breathe in the divine love, breathing in through your heart, into your heart center, that divine love and breathing out that love and light. Breathing in divine love. And breathing out that divine love, that light, that compassion to all. Breathing in divine love. Feeling your whole heart chakra, your whole area of your heart in your upper torso, just, just filling with the light the love, that love essence. And then continue just to breathe at your own pace, but focusing on love. And for me, I can use this technique. It's, you may not have any 
you, you may not be surprised in any shape or form that often I bring Earl the Pearl, um, my kitty cat. Earl brought so much love that no matter what's going on, I can always focus on love with my relationship uh, that continues, uh, even though he's in the realm of spirit, but just bringing that feeling sense to my heart. But from then it grows and expands. Okay, and as we come back, I can think of other examples that might help us to come to that place where we can love them all, love them all. So one thing I've, I've recognized, especially since I've been on the journey with unity, that um, there may be people that I get ups upset with or may feel hurt or anger towards or may feel resentment for something that happened. And I can think of one example, and it's quite a few years ago, but it's, it's still very, I'm still very aware of this example, that um, it was just a small thing, but someone had volunteered me and this person to pay for the whole um, table or to pay for the whole group of people for their meal. And I hadn't been consulted. And so I was mad, mad, mad that nobody asked me. You didn't ask me. The person concerned didn't ask me. And so I kept going on and good heavens above. I carried that act of resentment for quite a few weeks. Um, and I worked on it. But then something came forth that I knew I had, had an item that the person concerned would really, really love. And I didn't really have any deep thoughts about this. I just gifted her with something that meant a lot to me, but I could no longer use it. So I just gifted it. And all that resentment and frustration, and everything just melted away because I was in that giving space. I was giving to that person and I was giving and I had the pleasure of giving, the love of giving and the pleasure of seeing her response and how delighted she was with the gift. And, you know, that. That all of those, I say, all the frustrations, all of the re resistance just melted away. And I had a sense of this heart radiating love, the warmth, the welcome, the giving, the receiving. And so, so that's happened to me recently as well. And so that's one of my doors into being able to, to have the goal of, of loving everyone, love them all. I have a couple more. Uh, one of them is, I say tongue in cheek, but cheek and I say this humorously, because one of my little strategies is, is if all else fails, um, just playfully imagine that whoever I'm having problems loving, imagine that they're an alien, they're a Klingon, they're a Vulcan, they're the Q continuum. Um, because I know that, that, that if there are extraterrestrial beings out there, they're all creatures of the divine. And so they're all of that divine love. There's no spot where God is not. So sometimes I playfully go, oh my goodness me, is this a, a, a Klingon from the Star Trek uh, movies, this movies that came to Earth? Am I dealing with an alien being? And, and somehow it breaks the seriousness of me getting stuck in my own resistance and my own difficulties. We're actually going through a list of 11 things that I figure that we can do as tools to help us love them all. The next one is grace. And it's not a tool at all that we have to do anything about. We'll hear this in the words of the song that comes, comes next. Um, I could sing of your love forever. And the words often talk about our love came down. And I see that as grace of God, that when we really have the intention to to change, we want to be able to love them all. We want to be able to love whomever in our life is causing challenges. Then through prayer, there is the grace of God and it just happens. We can just step into that different space. And my number 11, and it is um, going back to the unity principles, is unity principle number five, live it. So, um, be, be love in the world. And it could be that I'm not able to manage this 24 hours day and night, but that doesn't mean to say I can't say that I can't do something every day and have this intention every day 
have this in my background of love them all and then be able to just maybe use one of these tools if they're helpful um, just find a way how how can i love this person how can i love this group of people how can i love this nation you know just stepping into more and more love and it can be easy to love those who appear to be more like me appear to be more like we so if some some qualities appear uh, familiar similar uh, alike then it could be easier and then we need to invite ourselves and yet we need to invite ourselves to practice loving those who appear different because we really expand our heart's ability to love when we love more and more people that are different from us that have different opinions uh, that have diversity what incredible opportunities it is for us to be able to grow our heart expand our heart into more love and as the divine within each of us expresses more and more love for those we perceive as other then our true essence and nature is demonstrating and expressing and radiating love in the world the master teacher jesus was love in action and when we look at the concept of oneness um, so often I look at my own human body in terms of every cell of the body, every beautiful cell of the body. They don't go into a little battle saying the heart, oh, we don't like the liver cells. They don't look like us. You know, the whole body is in oneness. And in ideal situations, our body is in that harmony and balance um, where we do self-heal because the whole body is then working together for that balance and that perfect divine health. I have uh, three quotes I'd like to share with you. I had a, a book that came to me, of course, like they do, just when I needed it, The Gift of Love. And it's just sayings from the Bible, or verses from the Bible, uh, all in one book on love. And this is from 1 John 3, verses 17 to 18. If anyone has material possessions and sees his brother in need, but has no pity on him, how can the love of God be in him? Dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. And then from John 13, verse 34 to 35, a new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. And then one that I think is probably very familiar uh, to, to most people. 1 Corinthians 13 verses 4 to 5. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrongs. And then before we go into meditation, I'd love just to share uh, a message from the Daily Word for February 14th. So love, I generously share the love of God. Today I commit to expressing the love that lives in me as I I extend my heart generously and without hesitation. My heart is full and my love flows freely. I look for ways to share my kind words and actions. I may send a message to a dear one, bestow a heartfelt gift, and just let those who are dear to me know that I love them and they can count on me. I trust my loving gestures bless everyone around me. Likewise, I gratefully receive messages of love, taking them into my heart and feeling the warmth behind them. The source of all love is God. And I feel the divine presence in every tender word and kind action. I keep this truth alive every time I speak and act in love. And that came with the Bible verse, John 13, 13 verse 34. I give you a new commandment that you should love one another just as I have loved you, 
you also should love one another. And I thought that that Bible verse was, was worthy of hearing a second time. So as we prepare for meditation, let's just breathe and become fully, fully, fully present in this moment. So we breathe and we follow the breath inward into our heart center. And from our heart center, we continue to breathe in that divine love. And first we breathe out divine love to ourselves, holding ourselves in self-love, knowing that we are worthy, knowing that we are the creation of God and knowing that we are loved. And as always, we continue to breathe in a comfortable pace, at our own rhythm. And we breathe, we breathe, and we know that we are love. And then we continue to breathe and we breathe in divine love. And this time we breathe out divine love to someone we know and we love. Someone that it perhaps is more easy to love and we just see them in this circle as we breathe that quality of divine love we breathe that knowing that our beloved, our loved one is enfolded in that love and is that divine love. And now we just bring to our awareness someone, something, animal, human, whomever, that we feel neutral about. We don't feel that we have any strong feelings one way or another, just neutral. And, and we bring, continue to breathe in that divine love. And this time we're breathing out that divine love to this person that is now in front of us or this place. Whomever we see before us in our mind's eye, we just breathe them this divine love, enfolding them in divine love. And as we continue to breathe, we now bring someone into our sphere of awareness that we have more challenges loving. And again, this time we'll just perhaps connect with our hands on our heart center and continue breathing in divine love and breathing out divine love, encircling this person before us, knowing that they are the divine, the divinity is in them too. And we breathe through any resistance we might have as we picture this person in front of us. We breathe. We breathe through any restriction and we focus on that divine love, breathing in and out. And the divine love is flowing through us out. Out to all of these people, ourself, people we love, we know we love and the people who are neutral and the people we maybe have a challenge loving but we know with god all things are possible and so we hold all in our sphere of awareness and we hold all of humankind in this basket that we're creating of the divine love moving in through and as us in the world And we take it just a brief moment in the silence, connecting with that love, that divine love that is us. We are love. And then as we bring ourselves back to the present moment, we'll continue our meditation with the words and the music of the song from Max and Barry. Oh, 
over the mountains and the sea Your river runs with love for me And I will open up my heart And let the healer set me free I'm happy to be in the truth And I will daily lift my hands For I will always sing Of when your love came down I can sing of your love forever I can sing of your love forever I could sing of your love forever I could sing of your love forever Over the mountains and the sea Your river runs with love for me And I will open up my heart And let the healer set me free I'm happy to be in the truth And I will daily lift my hands For I will always sing of when your love came down I can sing of your love forever 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 Oh, I feel like dancing It's foolishness, I know when the world has seen the light They will dance with joy Like we're dancing now I can sing of your love forever 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 I could sing of your love forever Please join me in prayer as we affirm our prayer of faith God is my help in every need. God does my every hunger feed. God dwells within me, guides my way through every moment, night and day. I now am wise, I now am true, patient, kind, and loving too. All things I am can do and be through Christ, the truth that is in me. God is my help I can't be sick. God is my strength, unfailing quick. God is my all. I know no fear, since God and love and truth are here. Amen. Our title recipient for this week is Unity of New Brownfields, where my mentor minister, Reverend Gary Kanye, um, is the senior minister. And so, as customary, as we often do, just holding that tithe in our heart center and blessing it with our love. Blessing it with our love as it goes out into the world through new, Unity of New Brownfields, doing good works and returning full circle to us as the law of circulation. Welcome to Unity of Las Cruces, where we know that God is good all the time. Your love blessings can be made at the Unity of Las Cruces website or on the weekly email. You can mail your gift, donation, or tithe to the P.O. Box. Your gift is given in love, goes out to the others in love, and love returns tenfold. And so it is. And these are all the very many different ways in which you can... Uh, send your tithes to Unity of Las Cruces, and we are grateful. Our February speakers, next week we have Sandy Anderson, LUT, then we have Reverend Jennifer Kleitz, and then we have Ted Gillespie. So some good talks on love coming up. And now I will hand this over to Ken.
Good morning, everybody. I want to talk a little bit about our upcoming annual meeting. We're going to be doing this on Sunday, March 6th, which is not that far away, about a month from today. And we'll have the annual meeting after our regular Sunday service via Zoom. And we'll have a great time doing it. You'll learn a few more things about how things are going and the current status of the church. And, and we're hoping to have some uh, new folks come in from the for the Board of Trustees. We are looking for some folks there. So I'm going to jump to the next couple of slides and talk a little bit about that. Uh, we are doing our sacred service opportunities. And these are the different positions we're looking for. The one I'm going to focus on right now is the one at the very bottom, which is a board member. We are uh, hoping and appealing to the folks who are currently listening. And for anybody else who's interested, if you are a member of Unity of Las Cruces, you are eligible to be a board member. And we are hoping to gather a couple of more names for our board membership. And if you are interested, we want you to reach out to us and let us know that you're interested so that we can kind of walk through this process and let you know what it all entails. And if you are interested, please send an email uh, and to the Unity of Las Cruces Gmail account and let us know that, uh, that you're interested. We'll make a phone call out to you if you provide your phone number or we'll exchange emails if that's the simplest thing to do. But we are hoping to get some folks specifically as board members, but there are a number of other opportunities for you to provide your donation of time and effort to support what goes on in the background behind all the stuff that's going on today. Thank you very much for your time. And I'll back to you, Helen. So now we have birthdays and our own beloved Reverend Tanya Dawson is on our birthday list for celebrating and also Alma Cuesta and John Powers and Nordine Warner. So let us, we're all muted and I will be in a minute, let us sing in celebration. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear friend. Happy birthday to you. God is blessing you now. 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 Our daily word are, can, on Wednesdays continues and we have an up, updated um, an updated access link and the password remains the same. So um, it's 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 all good and we look forward to seeing anyone who would like to join and that beautiful heart in the coffee we are in in that state of being love and in that state we're still gathering things for the action program for animals and donations can be dropped at csl off at csl please call ahead And this is something that I just heard about a couple of days ago. Um, it came from Wellspring, from Edward. So please contact Edward Burlbauer. The information is there, should you be interested. Um, he's got permission to go ahead and do, share some of the material from Joe Dispenza in terms of being rewired. And um, I think it'll be a great series of information for re re rewiring your brain and building coherence um, and so you can move from thinking thinking to doing to being so actually being it's sort of a, an evolutionary step that we're all taking so um, attendance is I believe both live at Wellspring and on Zoom but there is a, an, a, a limit to the number of people and that would be, would be 40 people would be the limit. So I just invite you all to contact Edward uh, directly if you need more information and to get the, um, the log in Zoom link, which I see is there as well, but just, just connect with Edward. Thank you. And we're still connecting and collecting for um, food, food and toiletries. So please again, call ahead if you want to drop any items off at CSL. So thank you all for being here today. It is wonderful to be together in our spiritual community. So let us join together in our prayer for protection and our peace song.
Please join us as we affirm the prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. Amen. this day or this week that we're about to step into let us step out in that love and that and in that knowledge that knowingness that deep knowingness that that we can love them all we can love them all we know it might take work but it is ours to do so blessings namaste